So this is unit five of the uh, FIS2320 Computing 2 um, uh, video tutorials on SciPy. And in this unit, we're going to be concentrating on solving differential equations using Python. So as with the other units, uh, if you're a student at the University of Leeds, you should be able to find the um, notebook on the uh, PDF version of this uh, material on Minerva for download, um, as well as the video. So um, obviously in physics, lots of the problems we end up solving can be expressed in terms of um, one or more differential equations, which you then try and uh, go and solve. Um, and this is partly why we teach differential equations so much in the first year maths course. The, although in the maths courses, we've tended to teach you ways of solving differential equations, which are done with analytical solutions. In many real world situations, it's either very difficult to obtain an analytical solution, or in fact, it's impossible. And so it becomes necessary to go and use some kind of numerical methods to try and uh, evaluate the differential equation and uh, find the information about the system you're modeling. Um, and this is what, what we're going to cover in this, in this unit. So we're going to start with um, a very simple set of cases. We're going to be solving ordinary differential equations um, where there is one coordinate, uh, which is generally uh, going to be time. And uh, we're going to be looking at systems where we know the initial state of the, um, of the system we're trying to solve. So we know everything about the system at time t equals zero. And what we want to do is find out what's going to happen at some later time. So these are a class of problems called initial value problems. Uh, and the idea is that we're going to be able to try and express our problem in terms of uh, one or more differential equations, which are the form dy by dt is equal to some function of time and also y. And if you've got more than one of these equations, then uh, that function might be a function not just of one uh, uh, y, but of lots of different y's. But the important thing is that all the differentials are differentials of time. And the other important thing that we need to know about these problems is that we have to know uh, uh, all the values of y, so all of those y uh, variables at t equals zero. Uh, and essentially what we're going to be going and doing is simply evaluating that equation, incrementing time a bit, evaluating it again, working out therefore the area um, that under the, 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 the graph if you were to plot out the results of those equations function as a function of time, and that's the and that's basically doing the integration. And keep on doing that at, at incremental steps in time. So for a, if you're just a single equation, this is essentially what happens when you use um, SciPy integrate quad, which was the subject of one of the parts in unit three. Um, so it evaluates a function and increases the, the x variable or time variable and reevaluates it and, and it keeps on doing that. And at the end of the function call, it comes back and tells you what the, the total integral between the two limits in time were. Um, and in the context of this sort of a problem, that the initial value we, we give the problem for uh, the system would be the integration constant. The um, trick comes, however, when you need to work with more than one equation at the same time. Um, and we'll see some examples later on about where you actually end up doing this. So uh, the advantage of the routines we're going to show you now is that they can integrate multiple equations in sync with each other. Uh, and so you can model a, a quite a complicated problem in this way. Um, you do have to be aware that um, it's not like many things in, 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 in uh, numerical programming, that's not quite a magic bullet. Um, and in general, there are some areas where you're going to fall over. So particularly, you have to be aware that, that you're only ever making an approximation to the right answer. Um, so you're not doing uh, an analytical uh, solution. Uh, I mean, there are um, uh, techniques for doing symbolic maths with computers that will find you various analytical solutions, but fundamentally, if your problem doesn't have an analytical solution, then there's not an analytical solution you can find. And so you have to use a, some kind of numerical uh, integration technique. But then you're subject to the fact that um, you've got various um, things that might limit your accuracy. You're never going to get the perfect answer anyway because of uh, numerical rounding errors. But for example, if your differential equations end up 
um, changing very rapidly with time steps. You might not be able to go and take a small enough time step or you might make a mistake and miss um, uh, important values because you've not taken the correct uh, time steps. Again, the algorithms we use try and avoid to do that, but they're not going to be perfect. And one of the big problems is if your equations um, have some kind of singularity, if they go to some not a number value or um, to, to uh, infinity um, at one particular time, then that's going to break the, the numerical integration steps, whereas an analytical solution, you might be able to work around it. Um, the other thing I want to go and just say as well is that um, I mean, there's an awful lot of computer codes out there that solve various types of differential equations in various ways. What we're looking at here is really just the very simplest um, uh, 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 techniques that sort of fit within this broader category. Um, and so it's partly just to go and um, give you an idea of what, what's possible. Um, and often you'll find that um, there's far more sophisticated codes and techniques that are, that are available. So if you're doing this in a real world application, you probably wouldn't necessarily be using some of the uh, functions and routines we're showing you here. But if you understand the basics of how these things work, then that helps you understand how the more complex versions work as well. So uh, we're going to start off by looking at a really simple example, which is um, uh, capacitors are charging. Now, of course, I mean, this is something you've studied in A-level physics, um, and you've probably worked out the and, and uh, solved the differential equations for this either um, at school or certainly in first year. Um, nevertheless, we're going to go ahead and um, and look at this um, with these numerical techniques. So our circuit is very, very simple. We have a, a voltage source with a, a, an output voltage V sub S. Um, we have a resistor with a resistance R and we have a capacitance um, C. So we can write down an equation by considering the voltages in the circuit, which identifies that the supply voltage ends up being dropped across the capacitor. Um, I amount Q the charge divided by the capacitance. Um, as well as across the resistor by amount which is given by the current times the resistance, which obviously is just Ohm's law. We also then realise that uh, current is just the rate of change of charge, and so we can replace our I with a, a dQ by dt or a Q dot, and we can rearrange it and we end up with an equation uh, Q dot is equal to uh, Vs over R minus the charge Q over Rc. And so that's now got it into that form that we showed you earlier of a time differential is equal to some function of, uh, well, time doesn't actually feature in this equation at this point, but um, the, the state variable, the charge, does feature. So this is now written in the form of this of a first order differential equation. And then the other thing we need to note is that we're going to uh, put in a boundary condition. And our boundary condition is going to be that uh, when we start looking at the problem, the capacitor is completely discharged. So the charge on the capacitor is zero. Now, of course, this has a very simple analytical solution, which is why you've done it in uh, maths last year and in, in, in physics one last year. Um, but uh, we're still nevertheless going to go ahead and use the, the numerical solution. And at least it lets us go and check that we, we believe we're getting the answers right. 